So, um, as Yuri has already mentioned, uh, this year we started this AeroShare project, SWAP, which will establish a high quality research and expert team uh, providing synergy, merging chromogenic smart windows materials and complementary competences at the Institute of Solid State Physics. Uh, within our five main objectives, which are human capital development benefits, development of new energy saving and chromogenic materials, as well as publication and knowledge transfer, long term benefits and sustainable energy, and for sure, innovation transfer to startup and spin off businesses. Chromogenic materials is a key uh, priority within this project. And I'm really uh, happy to welcome today uh, within our one of the first seminars on uh, project uh, Professor Esra Zaim from Istanbul Technical University, Department of Physics Engineering. And she will provide uh, us uh, with a lecture on chromogenic materials, a review of advances in organic and inorganic systems. So, uh, Esra, please, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, let me share my window. Can you see my presentation? I guess, my, can you hear my voice and the mic? Can you see my presentation? Yes. yes. It's very so good. Uh, I'm from Istanbul Technical University and uh, uh, welcome to my presentation. Uh, I am grateful uh, for the opportunity to speak here today, uh, even in Zoom meeting. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, this is my talk presentation, and the abstract. So I don't know your background. That's why I just put this on chromogenic uh, family uh, of the materials. But I, I won't mention all of them. I just give the name here, and the, you can see the you know the photochromic, thermochromic, and electrochromic. Uh, I will mainly uh, focus on these three chromogenic system, but uh, everyday uh, chromogenic family uh, of material ending uh, with many types of new materials. These two chromogenic materials uh, has, have some disadvantage because of the lack of the use. Uh, in my talk today, I will mainly focus on the electrochromic system, but you know there are also some uh, piezochromic under the effect of the chemical pressure of stress or halochromic uh, changing the quality of the uh, solvent or mecha um, mechanochromic, this is the under the effect of the mechanical force or deformation chemochromic, this is the chemical environment, effect of the chemical environment, and solvent also becomes popular nowadays. And this is the, uh, also, I guess, this is location magnetochromic is quite close related to this. This is just the, you know, main plant of application aerial the smart windows and this smart window you look at the market the intersection of this one is the chromogenics i mean the electrochromic i mean these are the active dynamic glass and if you look at it, this uh thermochromic and the um photochromic sample and this is the, I mean, the, this. so look at the principle well, and the polymer dyspleptochromic the priority is you know this is the XGL and also the liquid crystal here. so I don't want to go for the detail of this I want to hear the advantage uh, the devices advantage is maintaining the optical state and good at blocking the infrared and also long, tr long transition properties of the memory effect as well, I believe. And if you look at the uh, uh, smart glass market, uh, one of the world's largest market research database, uh, 
uh, we get this first uh, uh, formation architecture consumer like um, uh, and just expect to increase uh, the electrochronic, photochronic, and the thermochromic uh, material application in this market. So in my talk, I will uh, represent the electrochromic devices and uh, what we need uh, for electrochromic device, devices, what we are looking for, I mean, first coloration and pillaging time, high optical modulation, long life time, high collect. So all, all these things, bicycle tomogram, uh, chrono ampere, Mystery graph in situ optical uh, uh, measurement. Uh, and I just want to see it. Yeah. And in my laboratories, in my which material we are working or some of GCO, I will not present at ITO by wet coating of zinc oxide. And also, why I won't present this one. Also, some organic and inorganic layer will explain this one with this video. You know, this base seven, um, this is the base the electrochromic device, uh, the tissue layer, the electrochromic layer, the iron storage layer. My, uh, Uh, well, let me show you this like that, okay. And I'll put the, include the, the, the position, you know, this, these are the tympion, as you know, well, I believe again. And uh, in my different techniques to create, uh, some of my uh, students work on the electrode position, some of them work uh, on a uh, chemical bath. Also, some social process we have investigated, either spin or deep coating, and solution based chemistry. And, and is a internal uh, gas phase deposition is open. And uh, we are also doing evaporation, thermal evaporation string, and synthesized. And the tank to that, then light, and also some organic tea. And some of the results in nickel oxide and some organic uh, polymer, electrochromic of these organic polymers. I will present some of them. And uh, why we prefer tungsten oxide? Still, the tungsten oxide is the best candidate in terms of the. Uh, uh, materials because uh, we need low potential and it is quite stable, high coloration uh, efficiency and it becomes complete with bleach. And because of the you know tungsten oxide has empty peroxide like cubic space, which allows the ion to easily. Uh, um, in my presentation, part of my talk is related to the tungsten oxide group by RF microton sputtering. And this is the my, one of my master's student thesis. And she just focused on the, uh, in terms of the electrochromic behavior, just optimize in terms of the electro. I don't want to go detailed. I just want to give general view of this uh, study. And what the final case, we want to create this uh, uh, device. Uh, electrochromic active layer. Can you see my uh, pointer? Maybe not. Yeah, let me show you like this. Yeah, uh, the active layer tungsten oxide by, by the RF microtron spectrum, optimizing the, the spectrum parameter into behavior. So these four parameters, we uh, check the thickness, so we keep the thickness. And this tungsten oxide coded on, uh, this is also uh, coded by uh, uh, another student and zinc oxide instead of the ITO is a TCO layer uh, gazo uh, uh, was used and the sputtering pressure also the in the, this is the half cell 
electrolyte uh, also uh, optimize, and the finally pressure uh, parameter control, keeping the constant these two condition. So uh, the power was changed between this range. I guess you can see the uh, my uh, cursor, and uh, then we are checking the. Uh, the video maybe I will show it and and uh, you know the uh, voltammogram uh, the lowest uh, growth power show higher um, charge density and the 90 watts I in intercalated and we cannot remove the ion from the film so it is irreversible so the film so uh, and also uh, transmitters versus wavelength, the uh, trans spectral transmittance values won't change, uh, uh, more or less they are same results. After characterization, we get the refractive index and the film density measurement, and we need the power uh, uh, electrochromic application, so over power, uh, and because of the higher ch uh, charge, density, we prefer to lower the 45 watt sample has the highest current density, which means that a large amount of charge was intercalated into the film, then our growth power is 45 watt. In the second step, second condition, uh, we keep this one, the pressure effect, and then uh, in terms, of, we are doing the same characterization at the end, in terms of the coloration time, shorter uh, and bleaching time, shortest one, we reach the 10 millitor uh, growth pressure, F, you know, keeping these constant, uh, keeping these values as constant, we uh, will play with the oxygen and the argon uh, ratio. And this is the result of this one, 45% of the oxygen gives the best result. Uh, this is the long time circle also, uh, this one in study in terms of oxide from us at such low sputtering power compared to the lit literature with the gazo uh, gallium of zinc oxide TCO layer, uh, parameters optimize the sputtering total pressure and oxygen participate optimizing voting parameters are uh, for five watts and 10 millitor and the 25 percent which are going in oxygen ratio the, uh, in each step uh, was increased the value of the open from the uh, 63 to uh, another improvement response time and so we can get the electricity Perfect. Maybe I can show you uh, just small video real time. Just show you know, because of optimizing the uh, what and the ten percent of the oxygen, then this is the example in half set. Okay, for the, okay. Um, similar things. Uh, uh, was done as a uh, iron storage layer, but I don't want to explain all of them. I just want to give the result. Master thesis of, uh, of my student right, in terms of the, again electrochromic properties, polarization and some results, and the uh, porosity measurements were done. The process. A response modulation was obtained at 13 millitor, 90% oxygen, and the growth power this time is 90 watt. So now, uh, a, 
uh, in our device, uh, tungsten oxide layer and the ion storage layer as nickel oxide optimized in terms of the uh, uh, and uh, we are working on the electrolyte. Uh, so after all uh, coating, we did this characterization in the three electro system, mostly in the liquid electrolyte uh, in the purple carbonite and the potential change uh, minus and positive one volt. Okay, and uh, so far I just explained the sputter parameter in some of my uh, uh, students work on the bed coating, I mean the solution-based coating and this is the, the tungsten oxide deposited uh, by small gel uh, spin coated uh, application. And we are trying to make one solid device and different electrolyte because we have to improve the electrolyte also with the PAMSA and PMMA solution. We are using lithium. In the PMMA solution, we are using sodium. And just this is a video of these slide, slides. And on the other hand, some of my uh, students work on the electro deposition using a different precursor, starting from the tungsten hexachloride, tungsten powder, or sodium tungstenite. I, I want to represent to you what we are doing in my lab in my, with my student. That's why I just briefly want to um, present this uh, research to you. And the tungsten hexachloride precursor shows a better uh, chromogenic system. That's why we continue to create the solid electrochromic device from this precursor this is the device, uh, I guess this is the device presentation. Yeah, this one, I guess. Uh, so in tungsten oxide, the other part, there is no ion storage. We are just checking the electrochemical electrolyte, nocturnal electrolyte. And then we are checking the properties of this electrolyte. Okay, and you know, you, this for all this uh, study, this is the solution base. Uh, this part is the solution-based tungsten oxide, and we are we prefer to use the precursor as tungsten hexachloride. And uh, the same precursor, similar precursor, let's say, using tungsten hexachloride and the, adding some polymer PVB and changing the concentration of the blend, uh, we uh, try to uh, synthesize some fiber nanofiber, macrofiber, and again, the uh, tin film using the similar recipe, just changing the concentration, the organic and inorganic blend. And then we apply the UV light, UV irradiation, and this fiber changed the color kind of the you know, photochromic tungsten oxide film. And also we are just painting this um, solvent, inorganic and organic blend, I mean, again, applying the um, UV irradiation, it's changed color easily. It is just application of them. Uh, optical uh, transmittance versus wavelength graph is like that. And this is the, uh, the rate of the photo induced color change depends on the illumination in density and uh, within the one to 10 seconds. Uh, these are really promising. Uh, unfortunately, rep reproducibility is. Um, has problem. The first sample was really great, but then we cannot reproduce this sample again, the uh, same properties. Um, uh, there are extra uh, characterization, but I did not present here. You know, so far I explained the electrochromic samples uh, deposited by uh, sputter and also some uh, liquid based uh, system. Uh, and here, this part of the study, uh, uh, we want to coat tungsten oxide in a large scale uh, windows, maybe, maybe high tower building windows, you know, and to aim at our aim to reduce the price. That's why, uh, you know, uh, my precursor for sputter one, the tungsten target, or the social case, or the solution based case, different precursor tungsten hexachloride, tungsten powder, and so on. This time, we, I work, uh, I, I'm collaborating with the, uh, my colleague from the metallurgy uh, faculty of the you know, uh, metallurgy and they, they help us to synthesize our tungsten oxide powder. And this time we can control the crystalline and also we, we can control the particle size. So C represent the conventional tungsten oxide, CGS uh, represent the solution combustion synthesize. You can see the chemical uh, uh, reaction, let's say, here. Uh, if you need detail, I can explain. 
Uh, so we get powder. Uh, this is the conversional one. This is the synthesized one. And then we get uh, thickness, the same thickness and the same diameter pellet. And for this one, we are using the electron beam deposition tungsten oxide, again, the ITO uh, substrate, ITO coated substrate, and glass substrate. So in, we check the SCM, EDS, and the XRD result of synthesized powder tungsten oxide and the crystalline powder tungsten oxide. Check my time also, okay. And uh, this one is the uh, tungsten oxide, uh, synthesized tungsten oxide powder uh, uh, has hexagonal uh, tungsten oxide structure, while the conventional powder is in the monoclinic structure. So the surface properties also changing, and EDS represent tungsten oxygen, and the other materials comes from the glass. And uh, we compared electrochromic properties again to fair compression. We need, you know, the, we, we have to check the uh, uh, commercial one and the synthesized powder, uh, tungsten oxide synthesized uh, from the synthesized powder. Uh, CV curve more or less the same, but the coloration uh, modulation becomes uh, uh, better. You can see the coloration efficiency result here. So this the this this the solid one represents the synthesized powder, the tungsten obtained from the synthesized powder, the solution combustion synthesized uh, one. And then we again obtain the solid device using this one. These are the result. And also in that slide, you can see we are still trying the uh, electrolyte. Here, the you know, we don't have any uh, solid ionic state, just uh, active layer, electrolyte, nafion electrolyte, and the other the part is the ITO. But here now full uh, sort of electrochromic device and PET ITO was used in that work. And different electrolyte, we were studying nafion, lithium, PMMA, and agar we produced this one. Uh, I did not publish this yet, but if you're interested, I will tell you how we can obtain the agar. This is because they are compatible and very uh, inexpensive. And then somehow we, we have different electrolyte work here also. You can see the you know, transmitted versus wavelength and the pronoun parametry result and also cyclic water mock around result. You can see nafion gives the best result. That's why I want to present the nafion result here. So this is different electrolyte result and uh, tungsten oxide, nafion is my electrolyte and the pani, this is the now organic one. Also in my laboratory, I guess I will not have enough time to explain the pani, polyanilin, I mean, uh, was synthesized by uh, electro deposition, uh, by chemical uh, coating and also LBL technique, layer by layer technique, we can synthesize the pani. And this one represents, I guess, the LBL result. And uh, I just put this one, they do this, this is the synthesized uh, by con solution combustion uh, method, uh, memory effect. Uh, this is one hour, one and a half hour later, uh, we are measuring transmitters various. There is no real difference, maybe slight difference here, but the, it really represents good memory effect. And, you know, so up to now, I explained the tungsten oxide coated by a different method, sputtering, some uh, wet coating, uh, electrode deposition, sol gel, and also some device application. But we try to understand the tungsten oxide better. That's why we uh, have done uh, currently, in fact, we have done the, some electrical measurement to understand the, uh, what is going on the tungsten oxide. And this is a sandwich structure, aluminum, and then tungsten coated again aluminum. And then we are measuring the uh, electri uh, electrical uh, measurement. Uh, uh, and the voltage in the slope give us the resistivity. And I, we are preparing this uh, potential range because so in this half cell, we are applying positive and negative one volt. So that's why we want to work this potential range. And then we are keeping these uh, potential values constant, 0.8 potential values. And then we are recording the uh, current with respect to temperature. Then we, re we 
this we have observed well, the temperature increases, conductivity increases. This is a typical semiconductor structure. And it, uh, okay, my slope is not good, but somehow the rough slope we can calculate from the Arrhenius equation the uh, activation energy as 0.16 um, electron volt. And then further uh, characterization uh, has been done using the large band dielectric spectroscopy measurement in that uh, frequency range uh, and the temperature control. Uh, then we measure the dielectric constant real and the imaginary part. So the, uh, okay, this is my tungsten oxide deposited by E-beam deposition, electron beam deposition was used to, uh, to this uh, tungsten oxide layer and the center structure. And this is a typical uh, result of the you know, frequency increase, the, the electric real part of the electric constant is decreasing and the low uh, frequency part, just check my time, okay. Low, uh, at low frequency parts, the, uh, the electric constant is constant and more or less constant, let's say. Can you see my cursor? Maybe not. Uh, okay, you see here, here is constant. And then uh, while the, this is the, okay. And why we, I forget to mention this one. While we are working this frequency, uh, I mean the, this uh, temperature range in outdoor or indoor application, let's say Windows application, generally minus and positive 50 Celsius uh, to check this uh, range, temperature range is important, but we extend this range because of the sun effect or maybe thermal effect. So what's going on in the tungsten oxide in this uh, temperature range? So this is our uh, first aim. So we have observed at low frequencies range, the dielectric constant is, uh, real part of the dielectric constant is constant. And while increasing the uh, frequency, uh, so it's in, it is decreasing and it becomes 200, around 200. Uh, but at high temperature, you see here, and it is jumping even the 1000. So this is the space charge and the dipole polarization. Okay, and then, I don't know, maybe I cannot paste this one. Yes. And this is the, from the literature, we know that this behavior is a type, the by uh, type relaxation and also Maxwell Wagner type relaxation here we observe. I don't want to go to detail here. And there is a electron polarization and the DC conductivity. This part is the DC conductivity. Uh, but what I want to explain to you in the, you know, uh, higher frequency, uh, you can see the uh, 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 constant value appears to tend to drop suddenly, which is seen as a significant peak in the frequency dependence change of the imaginary dielectric constant. And uh, this is the imaginary part of the dielectric constant, and this is the ionic DC conductivity region at low frequency range. And, uh, and then this is the Magner, uh, Maxwell Magner type relaxation. From this one, this shoulder, we can calculate the relaxation time easily. Uh, using this equation, we can calculate the sigma. Uh, this is the ionic charge carrier DC conductivity. You know, the, the low uh, temperature values, I mean, this one, uh, minus 10 Celsius degrees. Uh, in one hertz is the DC conductivity's uh, piloto range. If you increase the temperature, so DC conductivity uh, at 100 degrees Celsius now, it is extended up to 100 hertz. So the uh, DC conductivity region is extended while increasing the temperature. This causes a high mobility of charge carrier. On the other hand, if you plot the DC conductive, DC uh, sigma, I mean conductivity versus 1000 per temperature graph, just getting the, uh, this data for each temperature, I mean this data just because these are constant. If you plot this uh, graph and you can get the, you know, 
straight line, the slope of this straight line gives us two activation energy using this Arrhenius graph. So something is interesting here. This, uh, you know, this temperature is uh, important and that temperature is two, I mean, the 10 Celsius degrees or 283 Kelvin. So in that paper in 1977, there is a first order fast transition around this temperature. So something happened here that there is a fast transformation here. So we still try to understand what's going on here. This is just the, as the positive tungsten oxide film, 300 nanometer thickness. So we try to understand what is going on here. And after bleaching uh, color state, we will repeat this measurement to understand the mechanism. And this is the Maxwell Wagner type relaxation here, the bi type relaxation in the middle uh, frequency range. And also in the literature, we know that if you get the slope and then we can calculate this S power, and this is the given, which is called the correlated barrier hopping. And this changing with respect to temperature tell us a uh, small pollen hopping mechanism. So somehow during the AC conductive, the measurement of the uh, electron beam deposit tanks oxide uh, film with the sandwich structure, we prove this one. But this is the under investigation. We are we plan to do the same thing for the device to understand the, the color state also how how uh, how this graph will be changed and we will see the uh, mechanism and we try to understand. But somehow we approved this popping mechanism. Okay, and. Um, this is the tungsten oxide. Uh, so far, I explained the tungsten oxide. I guess this is enough for tungsten oxide. Um, uh, okay, this is also constant, but we don't know the reason of this one. Okay, you know, I synthesized, we, we have uh, been synthesized. Our, our tungsten powder is nanoparticle size, and we know this is the hexagonal as a powder structure, the crystal structure is the hexagonal. And now our, our study is the organic polymers P3HD, and we doped this one, the tungsten oxide, the synthesized one. And, you know, the, the solution combustion method, we synthesize our powder. This time we doped this one, the P3H3. My time is okay, yeah? Okay, then. And this is now, maybe I can show you my uh, summary of the coating, P3H3, and this is the recipe. Uh, we are using spin coating. Uh, and then we are adding the tungsten oxide to the percentage 10, 3, and 30, 40, and 50 uh, molecular weight percentage. And this is the AFM result. And this is your P3HD. This is the 10 percent of tungsten oxide. Third, uh, this is 10, yeah. Yeah, this is 30. And this is the 50 uh, percent of the tungsten oxide. And this is the SCM result and very tiny, but we can see the particle size, but you can also see here, tungsten oxide particles are homogeneous dispersed on the surface of the, uh, this is the leveling the 10 percentage of the tungsten oxide and the tertiary percentage of tungsten oxide and the uh, in increase up to 50, now particle grow and agglomerate, then our result is not good anymore then then the uh, surface roughness also measured by AFM. So the uh, EDS results also represent oxygen and the uh, tungsten also from the P3HD. So you can see the P3H3 and we assume that the tungsten uh, attack is some extra measurement, this interaction is the electrostatic interaction, uh, but I just skipped this one in terms of the electrochromic. Uh, what's happening, you know, and this is the host material P3H3 with respect to scan rate and this uh, oxidation, this is the now reaction, you know, uh, lithium perchloride, this in the, as the positive one, this is purple color, while you're applying the pot uh, positive potential, it's changed the uh, um, village state or uh, color. There is no, you know, so there is uh, there is no here the reduction peak and this uh, you know straight line the peak I mean if you plot this peak the Earth is the skirt of the uh, 
scare root of the you know skin rate scare root let's say this represent that uh, uh, this shows that the typical electrochromic capacity behavior with the rapid ion diffusion and then this is the p3 hd and this is 10 percentage of tungsten oxide added doping and this is 30 percentage doping one and this is the 50 percentage doping one and the uh, of that potential is getting lower, and the, also the surface area is getting larger, higher charge density we obtain with the 30 percentage of the tungsten oxide. And if you look at the long time, uh, long term electrochemical cycle stability, also sewaging time and the bulging time measurement of this uh, P3 tungsten oxide one. This is the host material and 10 percent, just 30, and the, this is the 50, I guess, yeah. And this is a nice result, I guess. Just the host material, P2H3, the delta T optical modulation is changing uh, from the 32 to 23. Tungsten oxide of tungsten oxide, the optical uh, modulation or optical density, let's say, it is uh, more or less the same. And also we reach very high coloration efficiency value. Some extra measurement we did, absorbance and photoluminescence and also calculation of the band gap from the tau uh, relation. And this is the device uh, application. Um, so this is the P3HD tungsten oxide. Oh, okay, this is a solid device application. And this is the now glass ITO. Uh, P3H3 and the gel electrolyte. You can see the recipe of the gel electrolyte based on the PMMA, this one. Uh, and the tungsten oxide, this is deposited by sputtering, you know, the first, uh, my, in my talk, the first part, like I explained, optimizing the tungsten oxide parameter. So this one is that, and ITO and the glass. And we apply zero volt, and then we are, we decide, uh, we are trying to decide the potential range for the device case. While they are applying it was to 1.4 volt and then change the color minus 2.5 volt. Uh, this is not reversible, and also the tungsten oxide changed the color and it just becomes blue then. And again, this is a long time uh, stability test. Even the you know, tungsten oxide added one get improved the optical modulation. It, it's changed the value from the 34 percentage, it becomes uh, uh, 35, I guess, yeah. So the, the result is really promising, adding the tungsten oxide to P3HD, uh, delta T is, becomes from the 14 to 25, optical, den uh, optical uh, uh, density is again uh, improved, also coloration efficiency, it's dramatically change uh, even the double, uh, uh, you know, uh, really good result, and the bleaching time also reducing, and the color time more or less the same. So the adding the tungsten oxide into the P3HD improved the result. There are some video I can okay, let me show you. Video. This is the half cell P3HD result. Changing the color uh, from purple to a transparent case to the state we have. And this is the uh, uh, device case. Oops, sorry. I'm sorry, something is wrong. Okay, my power phone to say stop. <laughs> I guess I have to open. Uh, okay, I have to open.
the video, you know, it's like this big. All right. So, uh, just I, I want to show last slide. Just something is wrong sure. with my presentation. That's why I cannot finish. But this is almost last uh, one. Uh, let me check my. Okay, well, it's the last one. Okay, I just skip this video, I guess, because something is wrong, I guess, this one. But this is the full cell uh, uh, video of the device. And also some thermochromic behavior represent P3HT. Uh, tungsten oxide get worse result because mechanism is different. Uh, but if you change the temperature from the 35 degree to 200, um, uh, 25 degrees Celsius, the color change from purple to yellow. And uh, this is the hysteresis graph, but this is a really a higher, uh, high temperature. So for application, it is not so good, but still it is under investigation, but tungsten adding is getting worse. So this is just some uh, trial of the thermochromic behavior of this organic uh, conjugated polymer. Uh, I would like to thank you also. Uh, I would like to sincerely thank uh, all of my graduate students, uh, including those who have completed their master uh, PhD thesis in that field. Talk if you have any question, I am happy to answer. Okay, that's 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 a uh, that's it. <laughs> okay, Great, Esra. Thank you for your presentation. Probably we will have a number of questions. I see already a hand raised. Uh, but uh, I should remind uh, my colleagues uh, that uh, Dr. Zaim will also arrive uh, to the SSP already this summer, uh, and we shall organize also an on-site mm -hmm. meeting with discussion. Right. Uh, so uh, I see uh, Dr. Weiber's raised hands, please, uh, your question. Yes, I would like the practical side. You mentioned that you are using nafion membranes. Uh, do you mean uh, commercial ones or you prepare it as electrolyte by yourself? No, no, commercial one. We are using the solid nafion and also liquid of them, making the network, but just commercial one. We are also collaborating with the chemistry department. Somehow, maybe they synthesize some of them, but we just get from them. Uh, from the chemist people, but not uh, my growth. But I believe this is commercial one. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, these are my PhD and my doctorate student and work on this field, chromogenic field. You can see the, the uh, thesis uh, subject. And thank you for your attention also to Tom Siles. Yeah. Um, Okay, since I don't uh, see any more uh, okay, raised hands, yeah, no. I, I have a question also from my side. Um, since we are focusing on young researchers and postdocs, uh, your presentation had a very broad scope uh, of issues for scientists to deal with. And my question is, uh, in your opinion, what might be the most prospect topic for uh, young researchers to focus on? Uh, maybe hybrid system because the coloration efficiency and the uh, maybe the cost also getting uh, coloration efficiency becomes better and also the maybe reducing the cost uh, in terms of this one the hybrid system is uh, I guess uh, good. Okay, thank you. I will now give a floor to Yuri Spurans. I see he has a question and also some closing remarks probably. for very interesting presentation and that for introduction from first <laughs> in the chromogenic materials that it now is so broad a range of different <laughs> not only three usual but also magnetochromic and other and also about a very detailed research on your uh, materials as fundamental and uh, also 
properties. And uh, I think it's very interesting about your hexagonal uh, powder that you have synthesized. My question is uh, concerning the, the um, uh, what is uh, the, the main uh, drawback uh, in the application of uh, electrochromic and these materials, what you think? Uh, the first and about uh, scalable uh, technology. Usually we are working and other people we are looking on and we are also now drawing role to role production in magneton sputtering. What it is about scalable of technology, for example, other one, not only magneton sputtering. Um, okay. I don't understand your question in this about way, I guess. Scalable technology, uh, we, we know about for longer, for big window. It That's is true. usually we are speaking about uh, some uh, row to row production or big magnetron. About other technologies that it is chemical uh, uh, deposition, uh, electrochemical, what is the, the, the perspective for their application? It's uh, you know, oh, okay. on small device only, or it is also some useful for bigger production. Uh, there are many new research. I have in, in, in fact, maybe I can find some of them, but maybe it, it takes some time. Just no, no, it's not necessary, but oh, you, yeah, your yeah. what, yeah, what yeah, is yeah. more uh, uh, perspective? Okay, uh, for example, again, if we are giving the example in terms of my group, uh, one of my uh, students are synthesizing the uh, uh, temperature sensor. So uh, we try to check this thermocouple properties using this sensor to check, you know, this one. Uh, also, um, maybe some uh, glucose. There are some, you know, glucose sensor application, uh, medical application. It may be good. Also, in the recent trend, also some, uh, you know, the sensor application. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the the big desirable things is the display also smart windows uh, for this nickel oxide and the tungsten oxide are aimed because if you look at this uh, database, I mean, this one still that, you know, agriculture is the biggest percentage. And that's why, you know, the car and the uh, windows, uh, big building windows is the uh, main application area. But in, if, in the, if you look at the small scale, uh, it may change, you know, there are plenty of possibilities because if you look at the, or also maybe I mentioned this one, I don't understand deeply your question. You're asking the application area, yeah? Yeah, no, about scalable uh, for us, uh, for a big window, we are, because we are interesting for smart window for the energy, for, for sensor, it's, uh, it's uh, as a question, is especially you can produce small device, but, uh, for big application, uh, what it's uh, uh, more perspective technologies. Oh, see. technology, okay. Okay, I see now. Um, depends, you know, that's why we did all this uh, study because if we synthesize our powder, you know, the, uh, the, with the, you know, uh, solution compunction, mainly good, but in terms of the electron beam deposition, so we cannot get the larger scale. Uh, maybe solution base is the best one, uh, but this time the unhomogeneity is problem. So still the sputter is the best one, I guess. In terms of the technology, you're asking me, right? Right? Yes, right. I right. But you know, in, in what we we have uh, want to do, we want to do the tungsten oxide and nickel oxide by sputtering because it is possible the big scale for the basic into one company they have really huge sputter system. That's why we optimize the nickel oxide and the tungsten oxide parameters in terms of the uh, uh, electrochromic performance. After that, we need to synthesize somehow the salt electrolyte like lipon, and then we extend this one the larger scale of windows. I guess sputter is the still best one, but we are still trying the other techniques. Of course, these are small scale. Also, on the other hand, like a, the electric measurement, we are trying to understand the mechanism. But I guess sputter is uh, still the best one. Okay, if, thank if, you very if, much. If I understand your question yes, correctly, yes. of course. We awaited you in the summertime uh, to 
to to to yeah. discussion. Uh, uh, I would like to so, detail. Uh, I would like to visit you a lot uh, also. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, Esra, thank you for the seminar once again. Uh, I um, guess uh, Andres has some question. Uh, yes, it's uh, our director of the Institute okay. of State okay. Physics, Dr. Andres Sanspox, uh, with final remarks. Um, yeah, I had uh, also some questions, but um, Yuris already asked. I think one of the great uh, challenges is homogeneity of these devices to be used in uh, architecture, which means large size and homogenic in, um, from aesthetic perspective. I think that's, that's, that's a one big challenge. And uh, this, this is one thing we really uh, concentrate. The, the second is like philosophical remark that uh, you know, uh, nickel oxide, tungsten oxide system is a kind of very classical. Okay. And uh, surprisingly, there is not so much um, that can replace this classical composition. You know? uh, in, in, in terms of inorganic one, of course, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. And I think that uh, maybe the organic world is... is uh, better perspective from homogeneity, performance, and, and, and all the uh, scalability aspects. But this week, we can discuss. But uh, happy that you presented this rather comprehensive presentation. And really, uh, Yuris Purans has a nice project where he concentrates on, on electrochromic, photochromic, thermochromic, things and and i think there's um, one of his targets is to establish some um, international corporations on the field focus on this field so this is why i think uh, he and are uh, very keen in to invite you to discuss these things in person because the presentation is a good thing, but you know, it's like in a good conference, people talking to people is the most important part in this field. That, that, yeah. That's right. And afterwards, it can be an exchange of the students. And this is also like Timur said also very nicely question. So it's kind of your view, young people should start to focus their attention looking on this subject, because you know, it's like, it's all about electrochemistry in some sense, them like a battery, supercapacitor, or a device, or a sensor, or a, yeah. <laughs> an interesting thing to, to right. discuss for you the are presentation. Maybe, and, uh, maybe uh, I request. Okay. Now we pure. After that, we do some titanium oxide and cobalt, some molybdenum. We try some strong oxide is the best. Oh, yeah. one. That's why I did. I did not present this uh, according to you know this uh, chromogenic materials I mean but still about the pure tanks looks like is the you know the electric spec the next step uh, we want to check the solid device the electric spectrum while getting the color state then we will understand more the mechanism so this may help us Uh, information in terms of the physics also. Yeah, and, it's, uh, there are some things with, which right. like in ceramics and yeah. <laughs> bismuth in, in uh, thermoelectrics <laughs> right. things like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, okay thank you so uh, thank you so much. I, I, I would like to thank you for your attention and also giving a chance to me here. I'm so happy to meet all of you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Have a nice day then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.